hearing, taste, smell and touch. Did you know that we also have a number sense? Research in numerical cognition has shown that humans, similar to other animals, are endowed with a number sense, the ability to perceive the approximate number of items in a set in a fast and effortless manner. Unlike any other animal, however, we are also capable of learning numerals, digits and number words, enabling us to precisely manipulate numbers. But how do these numerals acquire their meaning? What is the role of our number sense in the learning of symbols? I spent the last three and a half years trying to answer these questions, and if you stick with me through the video, I promise you some exciting things. Hello everyone, I am Mila, and this is the research I did during my PhD. In mathematically literate societies, numerical information can be conveyed non-symbolically as numerosities or sets of items such as dot configurations or sequences of tones, and symbolically as numerals, digits and number words. For over 30 years now, researchers in numerical cognition have intensively studied the relation between these two numerical formats in an attempt to answer the century-old existential question about where the meaning of numbers comes from. Traditionally, it has been argued that our ability to learn and discriminate numerals is tightly linked to our ability to process non-symbolic numbers, to our number signs. It was widely accepted that throughout our life we process symbolic and non-symbolic numbers within one common magnitude system located within the parietal brain region. However, Alternative proposals have also been put forward, arguing that numerals and numerosities are processed in two independent cognitive systems. The latter account suggests that when we are very young, we rely on our number sense to learn the meaning of small numbers. However, as we grow older and start to learn larger numerals, our experience with symbols becomes so rich that at some point the link between numerals and numerosities becomes very weak. The numerals detach from their non-symbolic counterparts and become part of a separate symbolic number system. But what of these two proposals is the more plausible and the scientifically supported one? Disentangling between these two competing accounts was the aim of my PhD. To do so, I used behavioral, developmental and neurocognitive techniques to investigate how children and adults process and discriminate numerals and numerosities. Are they together or they are apart? This allowed me to shed light on the question how numerals acquire their meaning. So here is how I did it and what I found. My PhD research was organized according to three main objectives. First, I focus on identifying the proper methodologies for my research questions, while at the same time investigating the relation between numerals and numerosities in adults. Second, I focus on the question of how the relation between numerals and numerosities looks like in kindergartners and primary school children. Third and finally, I also attempted to examine the relation between numerals and numerosities with neurocognitive techniques. In numerical cognition literature, traditional methods to investigate the relation and discrimination between numerals and numerosities are the numerical comparison task and the numerical matching task. In the numerical comparison, participants are presented with pairs of numbers that can be depicted as digits, number words, dots or a mixture of the formats and are asked to judge as fast and as accurately as possible which of these numbers is the larger one. Similarly, in the numerical matching task, participants have to judge whether the presented numbers are the same in terms of their numerical value. In both of these tasks, participants' reaction times, that is, how fast they can make their decision, and the accuracy of this decision are used as measurement indexes. Interestingly, however, Depending on which of these tasks researchers have used, sometimes the results are contradicting. As an outcome of the comparison task, typically the so-called ratio effect is observed. 
That is, numbers with relatively small distance are discriminated harder than numbers with a large relative distance. The ratio effect is considered as a signature of non-symbolic number processing. Concretely, our non-symbolic number system processes numbers imprecisely as Gaussian distributions, positioned on a left-to-right oriented mental number line. The closer two numbers are on the mental number line, the more their distributions overlap and the harder it is to discriminate between them. Ratio effect is observed for both numerals and numerosities, suggesting that all numbers, irrespectively of their format, are processed in one magnitude system. But other researchers using matching instructions have not always reported ratio effect. In my first study, I examined why this was the case. Was it due to the task instructions, the different designs across studies, or something else? It turned out to be something else. I found that purely visual presentation leads to certain confounds which are quite difficult to overcome when only visual modality is used. As a solution to this problem, I adopted an audio-visual paradigm. Here, participants evaluated pairs of symbolic and non-symbolic numbers as illustrated in the picture. Then, I compared their performance in the audio-visual comparison task to a performance observed in a previous study from our lab where audio-visual matching task was used. What I found was that independently of the task instructions, participants always showed the ratio effect, the signature of non-symbolic number system, whenever the task contained numerosities. Surprisingly, this effect was absent when participants had to compare digits and number words. This finding seems to suggest that symbolic numbers are not processed and discriminated within the same system that underlies the numerosity processing. In a second study, we re-examined this finding with small and large numbers and under different presentation conditions. The results remain the same. Therefore, the first set of studies provided robust evidence that, in adults, numerals and numerosities are processed independently from one another and are thus apart. It also further suggests that symbolic and non-symbolic numbers are processed in two distinct magnitude systems. Once this dissociation was established in adults, I focused on tracking down its developmental trajectory. Two developmental studies were performed one in Kirten gardeners aged between two and a half and five years, and another study in older children aged between six and twelve years. Because the Kirten gardeners were too small to compare numbers successfully, the numerical matching task was used. So we gave them a number depicted as digit, dot, or spoken number word, and asked them to find the number of the same value. For the older children, we used the audiovisual paradigm. For young children, we expected that if they relied on their number sense to learn the symbolic numbers, children will link more easily symbolic with non-symbolic numbers, dots to digits and dots to number words, and it will be more difficult for them to link to numerals because the symbolic number knowledge comes later in development. Yet again, the data told a different story. For the children, it was easier to link words to dots and words to digits, but was much harder to link digits to dots. Furthermore, children's ability to link two symbolic numbers was the best predictor of their ability to link digits and dots. In contrast, linking number words and dots was poorer predictor. These results show that although children do rely on their non-symbolic number representations in their first steps to symbolic number acquisition, the relation between digits and words becomes an important factor in children's numerical skills from an early age. Similarly to the kindergartners, the symbolic number processing showed steeper and faster developmental growth later in development. First, 
third and fifth graders performed best when comparing digits with number words and performed worse when the task involved numerosities. Furthermore, similarly to the adults, children showed a ratio effect only in tasks containing numerosities, but not when comparing symbolic numbers. Taken together, these developmental studies show that on one hand, in very young children, symbolic and non-symbolic number discrimination is tightly linked together. However, already at this early age, signs for a separation between the symbolic and the non-symbolic number systems can be detected. This dissociation becomes more apparent with age and children, similarly to the adults, start to discriminate symbolic and non-symbolic numbers in a qualitatively different way and in two distinct cognitive systems. Therefore, early in development, numerals and numerosities are together for a little bit, but then they become apart. So far, in my previous studies, the relation between numerals and numerosities was examined explicitly. That is, participants were instructed to explicitly discriminate between numerals and numerosities. In my final study, I attempted to examine the implicit relation between symbolic and non-symbolic numbers with an electroencephalogram, or EEG for short. EEG is an electrophysiological device which measures the electrical signal naturally produced by our brain and most of the times looks something like this. In this study, I used a specific paradigm called frequency tag EEG. This means that the strength of the electrical signal is measured at a certain frequency instead of over time as it is typically used in the literature. In this study, Participants were presented with sequences consisting of digits and number words, words and dots, and dots and digits. If indeed an automatic link exists between numerals and numerosities, significant EEG response should be present in all number pairs, irrespectively of their format. Interestingly enough, however, significant EEG response was obtained for digits and number words, and for number words and dots, but not for digits and This indicates that some numerical formats are more strongly associated with each other than others. Although these findings need to be investigated more in future studies, the main contribution of this study was that for the first time in the numerical cognition literature, it was demonstrated that such EEG techniques could be successfully applied to investigate the relation between numerals and numerosities. Taken together, what do all of these studies tell us about the relation between numerals and numerosities? Well, they clearly show us that both in children and in adults, symbolic and non-symbolic numbers are discriminated qualitatively differently. This means that instead of being processed in one common magnitude system, two distinct number processing system exists in both children and adults, a symbolic number system and an approximate system for numerosity processing. Considering the question about how numerals acquire their meaning, the studies considered together provide the following picture. First, as very young, Children indeed use their number sense to acquire the meaning of small numbers. At the same time, however, also the first semantic relations between numerals are formed. In the second stage, somewhere in the primary school, these relations become stronger when children learn larger numbers and when they are also more intensively exposed to symbolic numbers and to language. Finally, in the third developmental stage, upon reaching adulthood, the symbolic numbers are processed independently of the numerosities in a separate semantic network. Some researchers have proposed that this semantic network probably looks like a mental lexicon. Each number is a node and the connection between the different nodes are formed through shared semantic features across the nodes. For example, 
1, 2, 3 are part of the counting sequence, or 2, 4, 6 are all even number. These semantic connections are further enriched depending on how frequently these features co-occur together. Nevertheless, the depth of the symbolic number processing needs to be explored further. So, in the end, what can we say about the numerals and numerosities? Are they together or apart? Clearly, apart. Thank you everyone for watching and see you on May 12th.